What up, what up, people? Man, uh, first off, let me apologize to all my subscribers and everybody, anybody who, the one or two people may have been looking forward to, you know, another video from me. Um, sorry, I, I had all kinds of issues. Um, don't really want to get into that. It's just, uh, I got a million and one excuses, but most of all, just please accept my apologies, and I hope you enjoy, um, you know, what I'm about to do right now. This is uh, UFC 126. Uh, this is definitely a card I couldn't, there's no way I could avoid, you know, speaking about this. This is something I've been looking forward to for a very long time, namely um, Anderson Silva versus Vitor Belfort. You know, two great strikers, you know, just uh, two legendary fighters in MMA. Um, maybe a little strong, but, you know, just a, this is a matchup that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. And um, this is just something as a, as a fan... We like seeing the champions, you know, take on the, you know, the best available challenger. This is just something that's been, you know, something I've been eyeing for a while. Anderson Silva versus fellow Brazilian and former training partner Vitor the Phenom Belfort. Uh, you know about Anderson Silva? You know, I, I think he's the the greatest fighter in the world. Uh, a lot of people have been, um, you know, he's, he's had a um, some erratic title defenses, you know, as far as activity, you know, the couple dan the dancing fest against Damian Maya, I didn't see all of that, so whatever. Then you have the um whew, him having a just snatching victory from the jaws of defeat against Tail Sonnen, you know, very awe inspiring, you know, it's come back from you know, come from behind, submission victory. And Vitor Belfort, uh, it's been like almost forever since he last fought Rich Franklin. And he, you know, he decimated him in a couple minutes. Uh, his last two fights were against uh, Matt Lundlin and um, Terry Martin, I believe. And he just smashed him very quickly. I think Terry Martin was into the second round. But, you know, just uh, he's been very dominant, and, you know, in his new weight class, taking on the contenders. Even with Rich Franklin being uh, 10 pounds heavier, I think that's just uh, that fight right there really cements him as the number one contender. Anyone who can destroy Rich Franklin and that kind of, you know, just very little time is a worthy ch is a worthy challenger and I cannot wait to see this. Uh, now, we all know about Vitor Belfort. He has super fast hands. Uh, you know, has very good footwork, very good angles. You know, he made himself very hard to hit with Rich Franklin. You know, that karate stance that he had, he was just... Uh, He's able to see Rich coming and just decimate him, you know, just uh, pick his moment to really just step in and just go for it. Um, against Anderson Silva, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, his sense of, Anderson Silva's sense of timing, reach, and, you know, his use of, you know, his use of his abilities, uh, not just his hands, but, you know, elbows, knees, and feet. I mean, he's just a, a real perfect eight-point striker, and it's just always a pleasure seeing him. When, it, when he's able to, you know, stand with people, you know, most people try to take him down. Uh, against uh, Vitor Belfort, he isn't the wrestler that a uh, Chael Sonnen or Travis Luter, you know, Nate Marquardt or any of those guys. He's he's a he does have a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Black belt. Sorry, I'm sorry for all the mistakes I'm making right here, but um. He's known mostly for his, you know, his, his punching power and speed. And I think uh, against Anderson Silva, Vitor is just going to be uh, is, as impressive as his boxing is. I just think that um, Anderson Silva is just going to be way too much of a well-rounded striker for Vitor Belfort to overwhelm with his hand speed and, you know, blitzkrieg barrage punches that he likes to throw. Uh, I see it. I don't know if I, Vitor is hard to stop. But, you know, I, I see this being a, you know, one-sided victory for Anderson Silva. I just think he has way too many tools in the toolkit. And um, I see him uh, being too much for the Phenom today. But this should be a great fight. I am um, definitely, my eyes are glued to it. Um, the co-main event is going to be a, uh, a light heavyweight bout between Forrest Griffin and Rich Franklin. Um, two very entertaining fighters. Two guys that really put on, know how to put on a show. Former champions and you know the uh, light heavyweight and um, middleweight divisions respectively. Um, Forrest Griffin, he's just I believe his last fight was uh, Tito Ortiz, I believe. Uh, what was he supposed to fight? I'm not sure he was supposed to fight. I'm not even getting into that, but um, 
I think his last fight was Tito Ortiz. You know, it was a very close split decision victory for him. Before that, he lost to uh, Anderson Silva in one of the silliest fights I've ever seen. Just, wow, how Anderson Silva just easily dismissed him. And of course, he lost to Rashad Evans. These are both guys that are, um, that are really, um, Flirt, I wouldn't say flirting, but they're trying to fight off irrelevance, trying to stay out of that limbo um, which, in which Rich Franklin Franklin was put in when he lost to Silva for the second time. Uh, I mean, Rich Franklin's in a position as a middleweight where he can beat most middleweights, but he can't beat the top middle, but he can't beat, um, of course, Vitor Belfort or Anderson Silva. So he's giving his hand at, uh, at the heavier weight class, and, you know, he's had a lot of success there. I mean, uh, he's just coming off a knockout victory over Chuck Liddell. Um, which ended Chuck's career. I mean, uh, Rich Franklin, uh, you know, he's a great striker, you know, a very strong guy, and I think, you know, he'd be good at light heavyweight, but still not, you know, it's still up in the air how these guys can do, or how these guys are going to cope with the division as it is now. But they're both very popular fighters, both very, you know, talented guys, both very, you know, skilled strikers. However, I think um, I got to give the edge to this, to, um, Rich Franklin, because I think he's shown the ability to hit harder than Forrest Griffin. He's a little more fragile, you know, prone to broken noses, broken, you know, you know, black eyes. You know, he almost had like a permanent black eye, and you know, I think he broke his arm from a head kick uh, against Chuck Liddell. But um, I just think he's a little more dangerous than Forrest Griffin, and that's the problem with Forrest Griffin. Uh, he's a very tough guy. You know, he's a very you know uh, tenacious fighter. However, he just uh, he doesn't have the punching power or the or real prolific with submissions, even though he does have a good submission game. Uh, he just doesn't... Uh, I think his success depends more on what his opponent doesn't do than what he does. If you make a mistake, he'll get you. But if you don't make a mistake, he's in a lot of trouble. And I don't see... I think Rich Franklin is a smart enough fighter to, you know, to stay out of trouble with Forrest Griffin, you know, to be able to handle his size... I mean, despite Forrest Griffin being so big, he hasn't shown a lot of strength, you know, a lot of wrestling, a lot of really being able to just uh, bully people around for as talk for as long and as big as he is. But I just see uh, Rich Franklin being a little too much for him on the feet. I see Rich Franklin getting a, maybe a uh, either a dominant decision victory or maybe a second round or a second round TKO or something. I think that he just matched everything about. He's a, these two fighters are very similar, only Rich Franklin is just much more dangerous in every aspect. Uh, the other fight I'm looking forward to on this is, of course, uh, the battle between two amazing light heavyweight prospects and Ryan Darth Bader and um, John Bones Jones. Uh, these are just uh, two guys that have a lot of success in the, uh, the UFC. Uh, both are undefeated except for that John Jones and that Hamill disqualification. Uh, John Jones, I think this is another one where the guy, where John Jones has just shown a lot more danger than Ryan Bader. Ryan Bader show, has shown heavy hands, dominant wrestling game, but John Jones just has a great, um, great length, great physical tools. You know, uh, he's shown in his first couple fights some very, um, off the wall striking, and in his last few, he's just shown some just very, some just ground dominance and just very, um, uh, what to say? He's just been shown to be more dynamic. He's able to get into uh, you know dangerous positions for his opponents much easier and faster than Ryan Bader's been able to, and has just been able to just uh, you know just tear people up with elbows and shots from the top, you know, and suplexes and all this stuff. I just see him being a little more quicker on the trigger than Ryan Bader. All together, like I said, I've been waiting for this card. I'm very excited about it, and um. Hopefully, I can get motivated to do some more videos for you. I enjoy doing it. And um, again, I'm sorry to all my subscribers for being sitting on my ass the whole time. Uh, I've been watching everything, just hasn't been talking very much on the on the net. And um, like I said, this is just one of those fights. One of those fights you just really get up for. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be back with the review. And I'll see y'all.